Well, that's it. Can I get you another drink? Uh, no, not for me, thanks. Let's catch my train. Oh, you're not bringing those things down, you? That was quite a speech you made. Thank you. You seem such a quiet person off the platform, but up there, the sparks are really flying. It must be my method of straining. You spoke about legislating capitalism out of existence. In this country, that's possible, yes. Within the institutional framework? Yes, because, see, we have a, a highly developed, civilized society based upon the rule of law where human rights and democracy are allowed to flourish. Mm, so, if a Labour government uh, planned to introduce really full-blooded socialist policies like the nationalization of land, factories, banks, insurance, docks, the whole lot, everything, then you really think that the ruling class is going to sit back and allow itself to be liquidated? Well, that's a, that's a very hypothetical question. No, but just supposing that it happened. Well, of course, we'd expect certain resistance from varying sections of the employing classes. The big boys, with their economic power, would try to dis discredit us in the, with propaganda in the newspapers, etc. Naturally, the Tories and the Liberals would do everything in their power to block it by legislative means in Parliament. But as I say, it's a very conjectural proposition. We, we don't have that kind of support yet. The Russians had Lenin and his Bolsheviks. Who have you gone? The Russians needed Lenin. We don't. No? Well, I see no evidence of drunken Cossack hordes armed to the teeth, despotic landowners, dark, sinister forces plotting our downfall. Oh, perhaps I could surprise you a little, Mr. Hargreaves. Really? No, I think you journalist fellows should give us a chance. I mean, we're only just now in power. You should give us the chance to get the gloves on, as it were. What for? The fight's fixed. How do you mean? Let me tell you something, Mr. Hargreaves. A certain prominent member of the Labour government has had a meeting with a leading Tory. The issue at stake was a highly secret plan to deal with any major strike which might get out of hand. What do you mean? What I'm saying is that the Cossacks are all around you, waiting for the call, if and when they're needed. At least that's the way it looks. It's a very serious charge. Can you prove it? But I can give you plenty of information to be going on with. You've heard of the Tory, J.C. Davidson? And John Anderson, the permanent undersecretary to the Home Office in the Tory government? Of course. Mm -hmm. In 1919, Lloyd George set up the Supply and Transport Committee to deal with any revolutionary situation which might develop out of the war. Last year, because of the industrial unrest, Prime Minister Baldwin revived the same committee, and he put these two men in charge. Davidson was made the chief civil commissioner and his salary was paid directly out of Tory party funds to avoid any publicity. The country was then divided up into zones, each with its own area commander or commandant. For instance, uh, Scotland was to be directly under the control of the Lord Advocate. These people were to take over from Parliament if and when private ownership was really threatened. You'd be doing what you were told at the point of a gun. So what happens to your democracy and human rights then? How did you get to know about this? When you organize an operation on that scale, I mean, when you organize what is literally a secret army, then sooner or later somebody's going to find out about it. How does the Labour government come into all this? Right up to its radical neck. These plans were set into operation in May of last year, and from what I can gather, everything went smoothly for a few months until Baldwin decided to call an election. That's when they discovered the fly in the ointment. What happens if the Labour Party gets in and all these plans wind up on the desk of some Labourite trade unionist? <laughs> Not only would it be embarrassing, but uh, it would also forewarn the trade unionists of what was in store for them. So, Davidson's astute. He knows a friend when he sees one. What he did was, he went to see Josiah Wedgwood, his opposite number in your government. 
And what he said, more or less, was... It doesn't really matter which party is in power. A general strike could lead to a Bolshevik-inspired revolution. Neither of us wants that, do we? So don't shelve these plans. They might come in useful. And Wedgwood agreed. Or so I'm told. My first reaction is one of total horror, disbelief. If this is true, this amounts to the most treacherous class collaboration imaginable. But how do I know that what you're saying is true? You don't. You have my word for it. And the word of others. Whose names you can't devote. That's right. But what do you expect me to do about it? I don't know. That's up to you. Can I get you a drink? Uh, no, no, really. I really must go. That's my train. Contact me now. Goodbye for now.